took me five years. I failed, I had to do a postgrad, but it's, I'm here and I'm going to be a doctor and if I can do it then really... My name is Nalencia. I am a fourth year medical student and I am studying at WITS. Today I'm just going to let you guys know about my journey into chem. So let's get started. So before coming into chem, I did an undergrad which was a Bachelor of Health Sciences and an, a postgrad honours which was uh, honours in Human Biology. Um, so. I didn't get into medicine at the end of my undergrad because my average was around 72 and then when I did my postgrad my average was about 76 so when they combined those two marks together as well as um, the fact that I was a bit student the fact that I had two degrees um, all of those points worked in my favor and I got in um, at the end of matric, I, my marks were okay, I think I got like four A's, but being an Indian person trying to get into medicine at WITS, from the school that I came from, which was a private school, it was really difficult because um, WITS has feeder schools, so you'll see that like people from Parktown get in a little bit easier over people from St. Stephen's, which is the school that I went to. Um, but it was okay, I did my undergrad and I did my honours and I got in. And in terms of funding, um, I've been really, really fortunate because my parents have funded my entire university career and I've been lucky and I'm very, very grateful to them. Um, so now down to how to get into the GIMP program. So, like I said, you have to have an undergrad and you have to do well. Like, at the end of the day, they take, I don't even think the biographical survey really counts. It comes down to marks. Like, if you have a 75% average um, or above, and you, you'll probably, you'll probably get in. Um, and then you have to write the lab test. So, as I'm sure you guys know, the WAP test is on anatomy, physiology, and molecular medicine. So, I was fortunate enough to have studied those three subjects in my undergrad, but I don't necessarily think that when it came to preparing for the WAP test, it took any pressure off. Um, it was a very high pressure situation. I remember that the WAP test, they put it in September, like at the end of the block, and you're trying to study as well as prepare for the tests that you have coming up and assignments that you have to submit. So all around, the time is just, it's stressful. I remember I was spending my holiday like in the library until 11 o'clock trying to push and study. And for me, it was quite difficult because I had failed anatomy when I was in second year and then repeated um, in my undergrad. So obviously that self-doubt comes into, into play, but I will say that in terms of the WAP test itself, the anatomy component is probably the easiest. They ask very basic questions. Um, the physiology and molecular medicine components are quite difficult, but I passed. You only need to get 50, and, but I, st I still didn't get in at that, the year that I, that I wrote the WAP test. I still had to do honors. But luckily, the WAP test um, counts for two years. So I did honors and I got in. So in terms of how I studied, um, to be honest, I looked at the objectives, but I just went through the notes that I had from second year. Um, summaries that people had made in the past definitely helped. I know that there's a book available, but I didn't buy the book. Um, and that worked for me. But I will say that if you don't have experience in those subjects, it can be very overwhelming to go through other people's summaries, um, especially if you don't have that foundation. So I would guess that then buying the book is probably the better option. And then, yeah, in terms of advice for future campers, 
<laughs> I think that the journey to game is really intense because you set this goal for yourself, you know, you want to be a doctor, you want to get into medicine, and then you get in and it's like the most amazing experience. I can still remember when I got in, how I felt, how my parents felt, how my brother felt. It was really one of the most amazing experiences. But then you're kind of like, so you're in now, but you have to start reworking, like potentially even harder than you did to get in because the amount of work that comes your way, I personally wasn't prepared for because in my postgrad, it was pretty flexible in terms of like the time that I had to put in. But now I'm like sitting in lectures from eight to four and going to Tuts and writing every six weeks. I mean, in my honors, I think I only wrote two exams. So there is potential for burnout. And I think that as a fourth year student, you know, I can tell you guys this, that at the beginning of this year, I was tired. I was so tired from all the work that I had to put in, in third year. And I wasn't really sure how I was gonna make it through the year and then go into clinical years. Um, and then COVID happened and I got the time to be at home and um, put in the work, you know, at my own pace. But I will say that one of the only ways to make sure that you actually have some balance is first of all, don't compare yourself to anybody. There are people that will stress, there are people that won't stress, there are people that will stress and get bad marks or stress and get good marks. And you really can't compare yourself. You know, you work at your own pace, you are here because you deserve to be here. You got in because they put you in the program. So stick to what you know, like stick to the study methods that you know work for you. Um, try to have some balance. It can be very overwhelming when you're like, oh, now I have to go home and I go to these lectures, but mm, I actually want to go like grab some lunch with my friends. You know, it's you have to find that balance because that balance is important. But I think the nature of the degree is such that like our academics have to come first. Um, if you can strike a balance and you're very organized, that's amazing. Props to you. I've been trying to achieve that myself this year and it will really serve you well when you go into your clinical years because you know when you're in third and fourth year you can kind of take some time off not go to lectures and um, study two weeks before the exam but when you're in fifth and sixth year there's no option to take some time off hospital you have to be in every day and then you have to come home and study because you don't get like a break between your end of block exam and um, the block itself. So yeah, I think that the main thing in terms of advice is if you feel like you're about to burn out, get help. You know, do some deep introspection. If you're not, if you're not comfortable speaking to someone, do some research. Um, on what your mental state is and how you can get out of that because if you are depressed or burnt out or you just feel like it is too much you will not be able to make it through the rest of this degree happy and it gets more difficult and I'm not saying this to um, scare anyone off we, we, we're in a difficult degree but it's manageable if you allow it to be manageable yourself. You know, prioritize your mental health. And I honestly think that it will serve you so well. And then you'll come out as doctor whomever and go into internship confident, go into ComServe confident and get the most out of this program. So good luck to everybody that is looking to enter the game program. I know that the pressure is tough. I know that sometimes you can become despondent, but don't give up. It took me five years. I failed, I had to do a postgrad, but it's, I'm here and I'm gonna be a doctor. And if I can do it, then really you guys can too. So thank you and good luck. Our greatest glory is never in falling, but in rising every time we fall. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like these. Thank you to the new subscribers, very much appreciated. 